My name is Teg McGinley and I live in Narrakenny. I'm also proud of being a traveller and what I come through in life. And I know now what life's all about. We lived in a wee old place out the road. We mostly caravans lied. Tinsmith was the only way you could make a living. You couldn't survive no other way. I started hawking through the country when I was a wee boy at 10. We were all great with public. And if you're going through the country and you have to earn your bread and butter, you cannot be cheeky with people. You've got to be nice and sociable and treat people decent. I was hired out at the, the square near the county when I was 14. They had you working from 6 in the morning to maybe 12 at night. You were milking cows, you were you slept in an old barn and boxes old wooden boxes, and you had a cannon and a box of matches. And if your matches run out, your cannon run out, you got up in the morning, your clothes soaking wet, and you went out to work. And you stood out in the field with a bottle of tea, cold tea, and a slice of maybe flour bread, you know, scum bread. And not just me alone, young boys and girls with broken hearted leaving Donegal and leaving west of Ireland, me old Galway. All over Ireland. As I went down to the hotels in Glasgow and I got a job working in kitchens. And then I went into coal pits. I went out to Edinburgh and I met this man and he was sitting in a, in a hostel and he says, uh, you know, he says they get a job out there in the coal pits. So coal work was tough on that tunnel work because you never got to know anyone. There were never no Irish boys way there on the tunnel work. It was all Welsh people. And they were good men, big, strong men. They were powerful men. You need to really see it, how good they were. Now, if a man loses his life on that 12-hour shift from you left the camp at 7 to your back at night, it's set. You'd be back at 9 o'clock at night in the camp. You got no grub because you couldn't eat it in the tunnel. It looked too wet. The water was going down the tunnel and coming down round your clothes. Now, in them days, it was old-fashioned air leg. Then you held it and you used a five foot drill, bowling, and you bowed five foot, depends whatever the man told you to. Have you have you away for a bucket of tea and all your mates is killed and you're down a shaft and people's killed? Well you know God must be on your side. I mean what I went through, so my was fourteen to come back. I was always sixty odd year. I was seventy two when I come back. And I was fourteen when I left. Life was, it wasn't a bed of roses, but I put that down as a penance. As a penance, maybe some our Lord. Thank God and the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph. At times has changed great. I don't see no hard times. I mean, I've seen travellers lying down along the road and the water go down and underneath them. They couldn't light a fire. They were gone for maybe a couple of days and not eat a bite of grub. And they had no bed to lie on. And the coat that you were all day on you, soaking wet, that was your pillow at night. That wasn't on your head for a pillow at night. So you can think of them days compared to now. And them days when a woman was having a child, she'd lie down in water, coming down on the road, lying on a bed of straw. You know, I'm proud of I'm proud of Ireland, although people say now that they're hard times. No, no, they're not. People never had it as good in their life. They've got money, they've got cars, they've got houses, and you know someone, your health is your wealth. That was The Travelling Kind, funded by the Department of Justice and Equality and the Department of the Environment as part of National Traveller Pride Week, with thanks to Donegal Travellers Project, Donegal County Council and the DLDC. Produced by Anita Gaidera and Stephen McGlinchey.